Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today's Thursday thought is going to be on perfection. Growing up in the Latter-day Saint movement, I was always reminded of Matthew 5 in the chapter, and also 3 Nephi, uh, chapter 5 in the RAV and 12 in the OPV, the end of chapter 12, because they match that up with Matthew, but uh, it would be 590 through 92 of the RAV. RAV, again, is Community of Christ, RLDS tradition, and OPV is the Brighamite tradition. The Salt Lake City Church Book of Mormon that they publish. But I was always told, you know, God says here to be perfect, and He doesn't give us any commandments that we can't do. And uh, I know some people are going to immediately be like, "Oh, God didn't say that; Jesus did." Well, to me, there's no difference. Jesus is God from my perspective. So there you go. But he tells us to love our enemies. Before that, and that's the thing I think is very important that we miss out on. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the biblical version today because there really isn't enough of a difference not to. And the way that the Bible is set up, it actually tells us what portions go together in each paragraph. And this particular one starts off saying in 43, You have heard it has been said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. And then he wraps it up at the end by saying, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So, what is it that God is doing, that, that the Father is doing, that makes him perfect? Well, going back up to the part I skipped, it says, that God makes his son rise upon the evil and the good, sending rain on the just and the unjust. And we can very easily take this and get into the why do good things happen to bad people trope, because the reality is that the rain falls on everybody's crops. And so therefore the evil farmer and the righteous farmer can produce crops equally. Beyond that though, Good and bad happen to everyone, regardless of whether they are good or bad, because God allows the opportunity for everyone to succeed. But back to the point, how then are we being told to be perfect? Is being perfect grabbing a set of rules and, okay, well, I'm doing this, check it off, I'm doing this, check it off, or is it loving your enemies? And I would say that based on the way we read this passage, perfection comes through love. Perfection comes by loving not just the people we know, not just the people we're related to, not just the people we go to church with or share some other uh, communal relationship, group relationship with. We have to even love our enemies. And recently, <clears throat> there's been a lot of people in groups. I, I am pretty much... I'm in these two groups on Facebook that I don't really want to participate in anymore because the one is, is too far on the left condemning everybody and the other one's too far on the right condemning everybody. So rather than coming from the middle where I am and, com and condemning everybody, I come out and say, love each other, love one another. And of course, that gets people very angry. And the question I've been asking as they get angry is, how is this group of people that you don't like your enemy? What is it that this group of people is doing that makes them your enemy? And regardless of what you think they're doing that makes them your enemy, if God says we're supposed to love them anyway, what excuse are you using to not love them? Because there's no reason to disobey God. There's no reason to not love them, right? They're just an excuse that we're going to make because, you know, if God said to do it, we do it. But I think there's more to it than that. And this is my Thursday thought for you. This is, I'm, I'm saying all the stuff I've said up to this point to get to this focus. Love isn't something that we can just do as an action. Love is an action. Don't get me wrong. But love is also a context. 
Love is also a reason. So we'll start out, when we're born again, we start out loving people because God loves us. Like, well, you know what? I forgive you because God tells me to forgive you. you know, I hear people say that all the time. I'll love you because God tells me to love you. And that's a good start. But as we grow in grace, something inside of us changes. And that love that God has for us begins to truly shine forth from us. In our actions, in our thoughts, it's like our very molecules change. And at that point, we no longer think, well, I love this person because I have to, because God commands me to. We begin to simply love. It's no longer a thing to do, to check off of a list. It's a core part of who we are. It's not something that we believe or an action that we take, it's something that we can't help but do because we are allowing the light, the love of God to, to change us, on a, on, in my mind, in a cellular, on a cellular level. And in doing so, we have to remember we're the creation of God. We're not changing. The change happened when we stopped loving in the first place. What we're doing is we're returning. That's why repentance in the Old Testament in Hebrew is called teshuva. It doesn't mean to stop bad things and change what you're doing. It means to return. It means to come back, come home. We're not becoming a new creature. We're becoming our true selves. And if we were created by a God that is all loving and that is love, then how can he create something that isn't love? We move away from our true creation when we hate. We move away from our true creation when we move away from love. That's the true good news, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And once we understand that on a not a philosophical, not a theological, not a doctrinal level, but on a this is who I am level, then we can really begin to understand what it means to be born again. And I really think it's a misunderstanding to think, oh, I'm born again, I'm, I'm being changed into something new. No. You're being born away from what the world has corrupted you to, corrupted us to, corrupted me to, and returning to our true selves that we eternally always have been and eternally always will be. So my Thursday thought for you today is love your enemies not because God tells you to, but because it's who we are as Christians. And if you're having a hard time starting that, start asking yourself, why is this person my enemy? Because I promise you, they're not really your enemy. They're just someone misguided that hasn't found the true selves yet. And the best way to help someone find their true self is to love them. To accept them where they are, and give them the room they need to grow. That's my testimony. And my Thursday thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.